As an example application, let's consider a point in a body whose stress is given to us as in this form here. So I've written in the, uh, in the matrix form. So we have the stress tensor has a normal stress in the x direction of 100 megapascals and a shear stress sigma xy and sigma yx equal to minus 50 megapascals. And all the other stresses are equal to zero. Uh, the Young's modulus of the material is given to us as 100 gigapascals. The Poisson ratio is given to us as a quarter, and that means that we can calculate a consistent shear modulus of 40 gigapascals for the system. And let's ask two questions. One is to find this, the corresponding state of strain at this particular point in the body, and then also to sketch the local deformed state of the material about this point. So to calculate the strains is very straightforward. We use the three-dimensional Hooke's law and we plug in the values that we have here for sigma as given in the matrix and we find that there's a normal strain of 10 to the minus 3 in the x direction, a normal strain in the y direction of minus a quarter times 10 to the minus 3, and likewise in the normal strain in the z direction is the same. There's a shear in the xy plane of minus 1 and a quarter times 10 to the minus 3, and the shear strains in the other two planes are equal to 0. So that's just evaluation of the laws. That's fairly straightforward. So now let's look at the question of sketching the local deformed state. So let me go ahead and consider a small square of material local to the point that we're interested in, in the xy plane. I'll do the sketch in the xy plane. And first of all, I see that I have a positive strain in the x direction and a negative strain in the y direction. So there's going to be some kind of deformation of this bit of material where I have extension in the x and I have contraction in the y and there's a bit more extension, actually four times more extension in the x than there is contraction in the y. So that's just, this is just a rough sketch. Now I also have to take into account the fact that there is the shear strain and the shear strain is negative and that means that the 90 degree angle that exists originally in my system here, the 90 degree angle is actually going to increase by 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 radians. So that means that instead of actually being a deformed kind of rectangular shape, it's going to be a skewed rectangular shape and this angle is going to increase slightly. So this 90 degree angle that I started with now becomes somewhat larger. Uh, if for instance I, I label the, the lengths of the sides of this little square bit of material as LX and LY, then I can sort of label the exact lengths of the sides and angles that I have for my new sort of, I guess it's a parallelogram. So on the, uh, on the right side I'm going to get 1 plus epsilon yy times ly, that will be the length of the right side. The length of the bottom side here will be 1 plus epsilon xx times lx. And the angle, the new angle, is going to be pi over 2 minus gamma over xy. So the angles that are associated with these angle changes are given to us in radians and that's why I wrote pi over 2 as opposed to 90 degrees.